Hi everyone, how is everyone doing this morning? Today is a very special day here in Ontario. All our workers are going to be rallying at Queen's Park uh, as a sign of uh, protest for the province cuts to many different organizations and, and social systems. So to all the workers and the unions that are gathering, um, they're planning to gather today and all the supporters and basically everyone that is gonna be downtown, uh, I'm sending my love and my support and uh, you got this one and your voice is important and with all your voice, there will be no change. So moving forward, I wanted to speak to you about something that happened to us um, about a week ago. I, I, if you've been following our page, you will know that our daughter, uh, Emily, broke an arm uh, recently. Well, uh, basically, I, I think it was um, about a month ago. I'm not really having the dates right now with me. But uh, last week, uh, she had another accident while using the cast. And the accident occurred uh, at the parking lot exit uh, where we live, in the complex that we live. And the reason why it occurred, it was because, uh, first of all, um, there were a couple of city tracks blocking uh, the view and the path for the children to uh, go uh, and, and stand for the school bags picked up. Uh, um, and there was, it was really hard for my husband to get to the point where the, the children needed to stand because the, the, the trucks were blocking that particular area. So my daughter uh, was trying to pass by and she tripped. There was also, um, you know, it appears to be a hole on the ground uh, um, under where the truck was standing. So she tripped and she fell face down well, you know, uh, in the cast. And she has crashed her knees uh, pretty bad. And and obviously we were very worried because um, she was wearing the cast. So we didn't know whether there was a major damage to the bone. Anyhow, um, the situation was very upsetting because my husband addressed the concerns um, um, previously. Uh, before trying to get the kids in the school bus with the truck drivers from the city of Toronto. Um, but the truck drivers ignored my husband's concerns and they remain in the place and look at what took place. So today in, um, is Wednesday, May 1st, uh, 2019. And today we uh, experienced um, um a similar event but without no accident what we saw was the truck uh came in the morning again which um in the 14 years that we've been living in this place we haven't seen um a garbage truck coming so early at the time of the children's to be picked up from the school with uh, from the with uh, from the um, with the special needs buses so this is something fairly new for us to see uh, that and it's de definitely very worrisome. So um, we have the opportunity to record um, how dangerous is this situation. So because at the time I was in the house with our uh, youngest daughter, I was not able to record our school bus in particular. However, when my husband returned, um, there were other school buses coming um, into the complex to become more children. And I managed to record one particular school bus um, doing their regular picked up. Um, you can't see any children or anything like that. It's basically uh, a video that um, shows uh, how is the movement of the school bus in particular and how um, you know, and I want to show you um, where this truck was um, located or stationed uh, and why, you know, the accident took place. So I think it's important that you know, because this could be something that um, it could take place in where you live, or it could also be something that, that you can, that you may experience, um, you know, in your own personal life. 
and we're gonna talk about me, what I'm doing to address this issue. So the first thing I did right after the issue took place is that I wrote um, an email. Actually, I made a call to 311 Journal and I report the incident. In addition to that, I email uh, 311 with the pictures of my daughter injuries and um, the pictures of the truck involved. And also I um, CC the mayor of Toronto, uh, John Torrey, and our city councilor, Anthony Perusa, and some staff members from their offices so they could, you know, look into this case. There has been an ongoing of exchange emails between uh, me and Dan, mostly me, because I've been getting calls from, uh, I got a call from supposedly a supervisor from the company of the recycling co uh, company involved. Uh, however, the person didn't um, introduce themselves with a name, a first name and last name or a title that um, they had within the company. And just recently, yesterday, I got another call from uh, a supposedly supervisor from the city of Toronto uh, trying to address the issue. But again, no names were provided or last names and or, or titles of, you know, uh, um, professional titles. So that's something that number one thing that you need to know uh, is this. So the, le the lesson for today is the following. When something occurs, uh, that has to do with your children um, or yourself, but let's just focus on the kids right now. When something when something occurs in um, and it has to do with a violation of uh, human rights or a, a, a violation of your accessibility rights or your children's accessibility rights, um, or um, the incident involved. Um, government organizations such as um, public housing, um, uh, court services, uh, Toronto police, or in case of us in Toronto, you have to make sure that aside the report that you made on the phone, you also have a paper trail. A paper trail is important because it shows that number one, you communicate your concerns to the right department. Number two, if your concerns were not addressed. There was a record of this information on paper and that information can be used in your favor for legal purposes. That doesn't mean that you have to sue somebody, but it is information that you have in there for safe, safe keep and that you can also share with other people that can help you intervene in your case in this regard so that's why i'm used to every time i make a report to an agency i make sure that everything is written down uh and really important to to do this is to write when you're writing the email i know that we can get very passionate about things but try to keep um, you know, focus on the topic, the main topic. And if you can write this email on a point form, it will be really helpful. First, because the point form will help you to um, be direct and to the point. And it's easier for people to read. And um, it's, it's less boring. So the person that is going to get your email is going to read it because you know, it's, it's, you know, in point form rather than read an entire essay, which is normally sometimes what we do as parents because we get very passionate, especially when it comes to our children. Um, so that's, um, that's one thing that I have experienced uh, that I learned through the years doing all these reports and complaints and things like that. So now I want to show you the video. So you see, I have another video that my husband record in where we see uh, the this truck, the one that you're going to see in this particular video, backing up on a, in a specific um, entry and exit point where my kids actually stand when they're waiting for the uh, school bus. So the next thing I want to tell you is that next week I'm going to meet with my city councilor, Anthony Perusa, so we can review the surveillance video of the incident in where my daughter fall and injured. Um, and also so we can review these videos that we just record. I had requests for city council to look into this matter personally because I think that aside 
uh, this issue affecting my family. It's also um, a safety hazard for all the children in this complex that are special needs and they're, they have buses coming in into um, into this uh, place to pick them up or drop them or drop them off from school. I think it's important that we remember that um, accessibility accommodation should be respected and that our children, they have the rights and we have to know that and we have to uh, uh, make people or educate people into acknowledging the importance of respecting these rights. So here we go. I'm going to show you the video, which I have a pause right here. Okay, so this is a school bus. One of the many school buses that came this morning. You see this part in here where the arrow is? This is usually where my kids have to actually step. I'm going to put you a little bit down back the video again and pause it okay so here our school bus our entrance is very narrow as you can see so it's all this path in here path in here and the same way you come inside this place is the same place as the same way you exit so we don't have like two uh um two uh entry points or exit points so the the garbage truck comes in this uh, direction all the way up here and then turns and there's a, a, a set of garbage uh, bins in there and another one in this side. So normally the school bus uh, from my children in the morning uh, and afternoon, they come through here and stop right here. And my children are normally waiting in this area that there is a, like a house that has a couple of steps. So my husband put them there to wait safely. So they're not in the middle of the way of the parking lot. So, um, when, the, when the bus come, my husband, um, he would ask, um, ask them to come and, um, and walk them together. They will never walk by themselves through here. And they stand in here until the bus open their doors and they go in. So on the day of the accident, the big truck that you're going to see now, this one here, I believe maybe we could have been a, a similar truck to this one, but it was this, it's the same workers of today, was all the way in this area where my kids supposed to be in order to get to their bus. So the accident, I don't know if we can have, like, I don't know, like the accident happened. Rocky, come. Okay, so the accident happened around here. I couldn't, I, I forgot to record this. The track was in between this area and down here. It was positioned in a like a sort of vertical weight, so you wouldn't have any view. So if you see, this is a supervisor that they send to monitor this truck activity, and um and you see where okay, let me go back here where this lady just passed by. I don't, I'm not sure if we get that particular area. Um, so the, the truck was like that, like from here to here, sort of. So the bus didn't have, um, way to go in and park in there. And the kids didn't have way to, you know, to walk safely from point A to point B because the truck was in the middle of the way. And that's how I guess Emily got a little bit anxious and she was, um, while she was with that and, and her brother, um, she got a scare perhaps and um, she missed the step and fall down face down to the ground. So this is a very unfortunate incident. But, um, and this is a video that doesn't show as much movement on, on the school buses, but normally in the morning we have more than, um, or approximately 10, 10 school buses picking up children in the entire complex, um, different areas. So having a huge truck or having two trucks like that, picking up garbage is a safety hazard on my opinion. And I believe it could be from the opinion of the rest of the world. So I don't know who is doing the schedule of these people, 
but this is totally wrong and it's already a worrisome concern for me. In the other video that I'm gonna do the same presentation, I'm gonna show you how the truck comes all the way through here to pick up the garbage in the corner that you don't see, but it's in there, in like this um, particular area. And you're gonna see how the, the actual, the trucks backs up in here, but almost in the same way that they did when my daughter fell down. So, and one of the things that, um, you know, angers me is that um, the two supervisors that called one from the garbage truck company and the other one from the city of Toronto were telling me that, oh, I was mistakenly that the situation didn't occur that, that, like that, that the truck didn't park in such a way. And I said, the, the information should have been caught for sure, the entire situation on the surveillance tape from the complex because we got a couple cameras around here. So if you see the tape and you make sure that that tape is in safe kept, kept for um, you know the mayor to review and the city councilors, you will know that the tape shows exactly what happened. So the information that you're giving me is totally inaccurate because the truck was parked in the way we said it was parked and my daughter fell down because of that uh, truck parked in there. In addition to the fact that your workers totally ignore our concerns and didn't even took the time to move the truck so the children could go into the bus or the bus could move into the right spot to pick up the children. So I'm showing you this and I will follow up with you in the, with the other video, just don't have it with me, my husband has it because he recorded this morning as well. Um, but we actually took turn, uh, turns to do it because somebody needed to stay with our youngest daughter. So for now, I'm gonna leave you to that and I hope that you like this video and that my experience has been helpful to you uh, in, a, in a way. So, so, you know, if you have any concerns that have to do with, uh, um, you know, city work or, um, you know, um, involving city staffing or um, these garbage trucks or things like that, you have to reach out to your city councilor in your area. It's important that you report the incident uh, to 311 and that you uh, follow a paper trail of emails um, with them and your city councilor and that you record enough evidence that shows that the incident took place. Uh, important to record things like date, um, uh, what day of the week was, the exactly date, um, and the time of the event. So you can have all that information in case that you need it for further action, okay? Take care, have a good morning, and I'll be in touch with you um, through the day, okay? Bye.